Never let it be said that I am not a man of my word. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Stockport. Uh, some of you might be wondering what on earth is going on right now, and I might just leave it this way, but actually no, I think I probably should explain. So, essentially, um, someone suggested it would be a bright idea that if I was to get Stockport to qualify for the Champions League, uh, then I would have to present the transfer episode the following season in drag. Initially, I said, no, that'd be a silly idea. But, you know, if Em's around, maybe she could help me out and all that. But then it kind of gained a little bit of momentum. And, well, here we are. So, firstly, massive thanks to my girlfriend for actually sorting this out for me because there's no way in hell it would look anywhere near as good as it does. And it doesn't look good, quite frankly, um... If I was doing it, you, you don't know what to see. Um, I assume she's just tried to make me look like her. Although I must admit her beard is a little bit longer than mine. So yeah, and I've just realised that the way I have this camera angle means that literally I, I'm wearing like stuff down here and you just, you can't even see it. It's, it's pointless. It's pointless. So we're just going to pretend, just pretend that I look totally normal for this one. The pimp suit may will return next season or perhaps the sheriff costume since I did talk about that as well. So we might have to go down that route uh, in future. But for now, it's a brand new season. It's season 10 of Rebuilding Stockport. Oh, so, so many things have happened over the summer. Actually, weirdly, it's been quite a subdued summer in one sense, in terms of the transfers, because I obviously made quite a few good ones, or big ones in my mind anyway, before we even finished the season. Um, and so it, the money's been a bit weird this summer, but there's been some other stuff happening off camera and stuff like that that we'll talk about in a sec. But firstly, you're probably wondering why I'm on this page. Well, some of you that didn't watch the analysis video will have missed the fact that I asked the board for a new stadium and they said... Why, yes, yes, let, let's build a new stadium. It's going to be 26,000 capacity, which is, you know, pretty reasonable. Obviously, we can expand and whatnot. And uh, yeah, the planning permission and all that went forward. Now, it's provisionally called Danny Bagara Arena, which, yeah, it, not the, just Danny Bagara Arena, which is a bit shit. I, I want to, it's cool that it's honoring him, but I'm going to throw it open like I did with the Frozen Fortune series. So let me know what you think I should call the new stadium, because we can, in theory, as far as I know, change the name of the stadium like I did last time. Uh, using that XML file. So, yeah, if you've got no ideas, serious ones only. Not like Bruno Bridges' bum. No, that's not a good name for a stadium. But like a genuinely good name for a stadium. Drop those in the comments and I will, of course, uh, pick some of the best ones and put them to a straw poll later. Don't worry, it's not going to be done anytime soon. Uh, they, the completion date is in 2029, so a full two years from now. And it's going to cost us £44 million. But we're actually funding the entire thing ourselves, which is pretty damn dope. And we've got a sponsorship for it of a telecoms company for £22 million. So they're paying half of the cost of the stadium, which is pretty awesome. We also broke the record for the most goals scored in the Europa League last year when we hit 40, 49, uh, sorry, 48, which beat the previous record set by Bayer Leverkusen. 48 goals in the Europa League is a lot. And with that, Wilson, Roussel and Makengo were all in the Europa League uh, team of the season, but somehow Miller didn't get into it, despite being the second high joint top scorer, I think. And yeah, he scored 10 times. How did he not get in the team of the uh, team of the season, so to speak? The board also dumped loads more money. They're improving our youth and training facilities again without me asking. They seem to do it basically every year. Soon those are going to be maxed out as well. And I'm really revamping the coaching staff. We've got loads of under 23s and under 18 coaches. Everything's being revamped because I really do think that's an important aspect that I've maybe been neglecting a little bit. Roussel also got his first ever France call up, which was very, very nice. And he actually scored a goal on his debut in a 3-1 win over my home nation of Denmark. Not mine, but like Jonas Fenningsen's. And some of you might have also seen in the analysis video that I signed Roussel to a new deal, which removed his release clause, because I was very much worried about losing him, because I genuinely think he's probably the brightest prospect in our team. Despite some of the other players we've got, he's only 19, and he's already probably the second best player at the club, other than Pedro. More on him in a bit. There's also the Super Cup. I totally forgot about that. Today it's going to be Chelsea, though. Uh, the first game of the season is at home to Chelsea, because of course it is. Uh, but the next episode, we'll do a double live come of the Super Cup against Juventus and something else. So I totally forgot that was even a thing. Now then, this is where things start to get a little bit weird. And I'll show you for why. But these are the FFP screens, uh, the ones that show you whether you're going to pass the different financial fair play rules. And I'd... We, once the transfers that I'd already made had come in, I got the news article through and it was red and I was like, ah, oh God, what have we done here? So I noticed and I went in here and I noticed that we were, yeah, we were over projected basically and we were going to get a five point deduction at the end of the year because somehow, I guess it's because of the way the money had moved around, I, we'd increased our wage spending by more than an amount that we were allowed to per season. Um, something I didn't remember dealing with before, but it might be because we've had to grow so quickly because of the progression since we got to the Premier League that I think it's basically we've had to move faster than we're allowed to. This seems like a real like way of preventing clubs from growing. I know it's to prevent financial doping when they can't afford it, but 
all the money we've put in is money we've earned. So the fact that we're not allowed to spend more of it is a really weird way of keeping the big clubs at the top, isn't it? But yeah, so we were overspending on that. And I was genuinely concerned because if we were to violate that, we'd get fined, but also could get a five point deduction, which, okay, it's not the end of the world, but that could be the difference between winning the title and not winning the title. And since we've not done that yet, I figured it might be a not a good idea to get a five point deduction. Now, I think part of this was because of obviously Jamie Lane on massive wages um, and he'd obviously come in. And I had obviously prepared for the fact that Pedro might leave, but my hand was kind of forced a little bit on this one because when Jamie Lane came in, um, we were over budget and I thought, you know what, the only way we can really get around this is by accepting a bid for Pedro if one was to come in. Because the problem was, once we were over budget on this, we couldn't move any more money into wage budget and the board wouldn't let me sign anybody and I couldn't even get loan players because they would let me offer zero in wages. So we were in a real sticky situation, which meant that I was basically going... I had loads of players on my list that I wanted to try and sign. We had all sorts of options going, but I couldn't actually put any bids in for them. Or when it comes to contract negotiations, they wouldn't let me offer them anything. Um, well, they would, but like the bare minimum. And it was basically a real, real problem. So I thought th this might be the summer that Pedro moves on because we don't have any other choice. Because... Jamie Lane was a good free signing, fair play, but we needed to find a striker and a right winger and there was options that I needed to try and fill up a little bit and we simply weren't able to do it and, and that was a real problem. So we had to make some sacrifices and some players have left the club, but I feel like overall we've balanced the team out a little bit more. So we'll talk about the outs first. So let's talk about outs. I didn't really want to sell Charlie Dyer, but he wanted to leave and the reason I didn't want to sell him is because I, I wasn't sure if he'd be able to have a lot of options there if potentially El Trobova got injured, but Unfortunately, with him wanting to leave, there wasn't really much I could do, and he was offered massive wages at Gladbach. We had a deal agreed uh, with Bremen, actually, for £20 million, but he turned down their contract, so he eventually moved to Gladbach for 17.75, which is still a lot of money, and he got some wages off the bill. And the reason I got rid of Charlie Dyer initially was to try to balance the books a little bit, but then I noticed that it didn't seem to change anything. When he was off the books, it, it didn't adjust at all. So I was like, oh, God, are we in some serious trouble? So at this point, I was like, we're going to have to accept a bid for Pedro if one comes in because he's one of our highest earners. And the fact that we got Jamie Lane in that position now, I kind of thought that that's one position that potentially could be expendable to us. Uh, as much as I didn't want to, we, we didn't have much choice. And then in came the bid. Uh, Bayern Munich came in for Pedro and uh, I was forced to sell. And I honestly, I feel like I... I feel like they should have given us more money, but it was the best deal that I could get out of them at the time. Good Lord, he's on £220,000 a week. I did not notice that. But yeah, so Pedro has left the club to join Bayern Munich. Uh, to be fair, once the bid came in, I knew for a fact that if I'd have... Because it said, like, he wants to talk to them because he'd be given up. Yeah, so I knew that if I turned it down, he probably would complain anyway and just force the move. So, yeah, £86 million pounds, uh, was the transfer fee in the end. Most of that, I think £82 million was up front. And there's a further £4 million over, like, the next three years or whatever. Plus a 20% of next sale fee clause, which is actually not bad, to be honest. We, we might actually get something back from that as well. So £86 million, uh, we got for Pedro, which is by far the biggest sale that we've ever had in this save. I still wish... We we could have found a way to keep hold but because of these rules and whatnot we had no choice but there you go as these are the only two main outs that we've actually had pedro and charlie Dyer. there's been a few players going out and paying loans and whatnot like john gray he's gone to west brom for a year paying all of his 15 grand a week wages which is helpful the weird thing was even when i sold pedro it didn't adjust the projection so i was getting really scared and it took a full week for it to actually say that we were allowed we were back within the FFP rules again, which meant that there was another week that went by when I couldn't sign any players. Um, because now, obviously, we're moving on Pedro. We had stacks of money laying around, and I really did want to reinvest that elsewhere to try and find us either a striker or a, white, a right winger. Just to quickly show you guys, uh, Jamie Lane, our left-sided player, he's on £140,000 a week. That's because he had a match-highest earner clause. And when he came in, Pedro was on higher money now. And as a result, Jamie Lane then got loads of money. So, yeah, 31-year-old Frenchman. But you can see he's an absolute star. For the most part the fact that he's right footed really does help knocks ball past opponents too he's not got that annoying ppm that pedro had that meant that he arrived late he's got the liam miller situation too he's also better in the air uh, than pedro despite having a slightly worse jumping reach he's better at heading he's got good long shots good free kick first touch dribbling finishing basically everything you could possibly want from a player literally other than his long throws and his jumping reach everything oh his tackling is his lowest stat there at 11 but most things are 13 plus which is unbelievable quite frankly um now after that and then we had that money i did try to go after a striker this guy called what was his name um something garcia who was playing for real betis 
it was a big deal. It was £60 million was the agreed transfer fee. He was like Bicer, but better. And I thought, you know what? We need to try and sign this guy right now. And unfortunately, Dortmund and Chelsea came in with sort of 48 to £53 million bids. And in the end, he ended up joining Chelsea. Which, I mean, fair enough, he'd want to join Chelsea. They are the Premier League champions and all that. But why would the club... They accepted like £12 million less from Chelsea. Uh, and yet they wouldn't even negotiate with us because that was his release clause. So really, really strange. I guess we still don't have the rep yet. So I had to then desperately try and find another striker. Luckily, there was one on my shortlist who I was able to go after. And that is this guy. This is Kevin Wright. He's a 19-year-old Scotsman who signed from Celtic. So we've actually brought in another British player, which I think is pretty cool. And I think he's pretty bloody awesome. He is a lot shorter. He's five foot nine. I grant you. So it's not great there. But he's got great balance. He's incredibly quick. Uh, 16 dribbling, 17 finishing as well. Runs with ball often. His passing is decent. He's got great work rate. I think he's a really, really solid player. Uh, he's played two games for us in friendlies. And he's got five goals in that period. Uh, which is interesting because I noticed that through that period when we were playing the friendlies, when Bicer was in the team, he just wasn't scoring goals. Whereas Greg Stubbs, Kevin Wright and Craig Palmer, when they were put in the team, were scoring goals. So yeah, and Craig Palmer is still here. So he is going to be playing for us this year, not Brentford, who, well, they came seventh last year. So he's not quite the relegation specialist some of you said he was. But yeah, Kevin Wright, uh, 24.5 million, I think it was. Yeah, 24.5 million uh, was the deal in the end. And I think that was a, a pretty good deal for a player like this, to be honest. When we were looking at some of the other guys that were around that kind of quality level, we were talking, there was a guy called Mikel Garrido as at Sevilla. They wanted 99 million for him and he would have wanted like 200 grand a week. Whereas this guy's a bit younger. He's got room to grow as well, which is important. And he's only on 30, uh, 38,000 pounds a week. So a much, much better deal with that. And he's already worth more than we paid for him. So I think this guy's a really solid player. I also brought in Felix Correa on loan from Sporting uh, for a season. Now, because again of the wages, what I did, they wanted X amount in wages. So what I did was I took it all off of wages and put it onto the monthly payments instead. And I think that means it's not going to count against our wage spending. So that means we've managed to stay under the FFP by basically just spending it all on a different column. Uh, creative accounting. Enron, if you're looking... And the last actual signing I've made during this summer period, I know, crazy, considering all the other signings I made before. So there were five signings too before these ones, but the ones that I made over the course of the transfer window. Uh, this is Alex Martinez. He's on loan from Monaco for a year. Same kind of deal uh, where we're, you know, he's, we're paying zero, as you can see. Uh, wait, oh no, that's right. Yeah, sorry. He's on 99 grand a week at Monaco, but we're paying uh, 20,000 pounds worth of his wages and making up the rest of it in the other payments and whatnot. Now, he's not fantastic, um, because again, crossing and dribbling isn't great, but I feel like he's a reasonable option for us for the season again, until um, Julio Vigo can actually play for us. Because again, still no work permit for him, but one more year in Spain is all he needs to get that work permit. So Alex Martinez will be our right back for this year. And I think he's a pretty solid right back. He's got amazing physical stats, which is nice. Good mentors. He's a decent player. Hopefully he'll do well. Also, Milan Durand joined Chelsea in the summer on a permanent transfer for £15 million from Lyon. Maybe we should have just gone back in for Durand if I'd have known he was available that cheap, but there you go. I didn't want to have to sell Pedro, but once when I saw that bid from Bayern, I, I knew kind of what had to be did because he wasn't wanted by anyone else. And when that bid came in, I thought, you know what? This is the, the best chance we're going to have to actually make this work, unfortunately. So today it's Chelsea. Not the way we would have wanted to start the year. I would have preferred a slightly easier game, but you never know. Let's go out and try and see what we can do, eh? So Thomas Tuchel is now managing Chelsea. Now we've got a couple of little injuries. Uh, David Mello is out injured. Uh, Nicholas, yeah, the guard dog has also got as is John Okoro at the moment. So a few little niggly knocks here and there, but we should still be able to put together a relatively strong side, particularly with the new lads as well. I think Stoichu is back. He had a pre-season injury, so he will definitely be able to play too. So uh, we'll do a quick switcheroo and see who actually comes up trumps on this one. So yeah, Kevin Wright definitely up top. Lane and Abasolo, that's no problem. In the midfield, I, yeah, I'm happy to go with... Um, with Staichu, Slawi, and Bofa in there. Obviously, the links will still need to be built up, but we're good in these positions at the moment when you look at it. You know, Melo's available. We've got Davison, Akwebu, John Hume. There's a wealth of options in that midfield. I think having six players to rotate around three, uh, two positions is definitely enough. The issue for me is we're a little bit light, in fact, very, very light, in the defensive midfield zone. It's really only Eltro Bova who can play there at the moment, and that could be a problem. We might have to look for something in January if we can. I don't know. Booty's going out on loan to Middlesbrough because, again, wages. At the back, Bednar. Uh, Roussel and Maya. It's nice to see Eulis Maya start there. And of course, Alex Martinez. I think the back line's still looking decent. Wilson is available, as is Nagoita. I would be tempted to start Nagoita for today. I was tempted to actually get rid of Wilson entirely. But yeah, the chance didn't really present itself, unfortunately. And he's on a lot of money. 
So I think that's what we're going to go for. On the bench, Miller, Makengo, Davison, Dimitrov, Puro, who really has worked himself into the team, Akwebu, and Greg Stubbs. How could we not have Greg Stubbs there? I'm actually going to prefer him to potentially Garice this year. We've got lots of options in strikers with Garice, Stubbs, Palmer, um, Bicer, Wright. Lots and lots of striker options, which is nice. None of them are really excelling yet, but I want to give them a chance this year, you know? So this is going to be a tough one. Um, it couldn't really have got any tougher. I will get proper faces for these guys. Don't worry, guys. It's just because it's really late at night at the moment. I will sort this out for the next episode when I record it tomorrow. Let's get out there and show us what we can do. I, I would like to see something a little bit different. This microphone's quite high up, actually. See what we can do today. You know, I want to see what Jamie Lane is capable of, basically, when he gets that ball and can have a run at people. Here he goes. Ball at his feet. A pretty strong start from us so far. All of the ball so far. All of the chances. That's really, really nice to see. Maya, I want to see whether Jamie Lane is going to make those runs. Oh, well played. That's really well worked from Abasola there, actually. He's, he's anticipated that really well. Kevin Wright picks it up. He's got it still. Slowy. Out wide for Abasola. All right, here we go. Jamie Lane needs to make that run soon. Back post. I think we've found our new hero. Stockport 1, Chelsea 0. Jamie Lane goes to the back post, makes the Liam Miller run. I know Pedro made them sometimes, but not like that. That was classic Liam Miller. Writes out a position. Abasolo picks out a wonderful ball. Lane with the thunderous strike with his right at the goalkeeper, but it's 1-0 to Stockport County. We lead against last year's winners, Chelsea. Perfect. But it is important to remember, this is basically a top-of-the-table clash, and we're winning it so far, but there's still some work to do, I think. I'm going to press them a bit more and go to regroup, uh, go to counter-press, but we're also going to hit some early crosses. In these games, we're just sort of struggling a little bit to find any opportunities at all. I find that that seems to be the, the next thing after um, turning off work ball into the box. Although we are winning, so there is that though. Slowy. Alex Martinez. Back for Slowy. He likes to be in this position. Lane. Roussel. Coming all the way through. Staichu's in. Well, I think that's the defender that's made a huge area. Livius Staichu. Someone tell me how to pronounce his name. On his debut. So two goals for two debut taunts. We're two nil up over Chelsea here. Martinez. Drops it off to Slough. We basically just lose possession here. And then it deflects through. And the... Oh, no. The defender. It's the defender's fault. He plays a dreadful back pass. And Stacey manages to get in on the end of it. It's 2-0 Stockport. Maybe we should go to a slightly more direct passing. Slowy again. He's coming through here. All the way through. He's coming all the way through again. Oh, my God. He's put it in. Stockport 3, Chelsea 0. Opening day of the season. And surely now we're going to win this match. Slowy gets massively fortunate. But look at this. He's actually taken the ball from inside his own half here. Textbook Slowy. Takes on two players. Gets Comes back to him. But this is an absolute... Look at that for a finish. Keeper maybe could have done a bit better. It's 3 nothing now. Wow, I'm getting sweaty now. Particularly with those diagonal balls. Slowy again. He can pick out a good cross here. You know he likes to. He's gone all the way through. Oh, they're pushing a lot of players forward. If they lose the ball, they're in deep trouble. And they have lost the ball. Lane. Bofa. Oh, here we go. Kevin Wright. Pace and space. Oh, what a save from the goalkeeper. Kepa does really well there. Easily won. And Stacey picks it up. He's got to slip through Kevin Wright, surely. No, Abasolo. Can he dig one to the back post? Slowy save by Kepa. Yeah, we're dominating him in the second period. <laughs> Nagoita just lumps that long, and Greg Stubbs isn't the shortest player on the pitch. Good touch from Greg Stubbs. Oh, what about that from Greg Stubbs? And I think we're about to. And there it is. Stockport 3, reigning champions of the Premier League, Chelsea nil. Goals from Jamie Lane, Livio Stanchu, and Slowy, of course, getting in there too. And what an excellent performance that is on the opening day of the season. That, to me, suggests we've got real game to potentially go for the title this year. I think the little changes we've made have definitely strengthened this team overall. And we've got more options throughout the squad. And I'm really looking forward to challenging for many, many things this year. Super excited, and I hope you are as well. Kevin Wright, yeah, it was only one game, but I think what he... He'll hopefully be at more chances against worse sides as well. So hopefully he does okay. But we've still got plenty of other players waiting in the wings. Debutants getting goals. The team is looking really, really fresh and nice. We've got some slightly easier games to come. So I'm I'm looking forward to this year. Let me know your predictions for where we're going to come this year. I think we're going to be... I don't think we're going to win the league. But I think we're going to be much, much closer. And we'll actually be in a proper title race this season. We won't fade away so much in the mid part of the year. That's my hope anyway. So if you've enjoyed this season, let's just... Uh, you've enjoyed this season? Let's try that again. Uh, yeah, you might notice we were actually played a testimonial game for some guy called Mendez. I don't know exactly who that is. Who is it, the guy Mendez? Brace Mendez. Yes, yeah, so we played in his testimonial, which was kind of cool. Um, yeah, next episode is going to be Juve and Bristol City in the UEFA Super Cup. Off camera, we'll have Leicester and West Ham. And then after that, of course, we've got Champions League. Uh, the group stage draw will be somewhere around here too. But I thought you guys might want to see the Super Cup, see how we fare against someone like Juventus. That would be quite a test for us, I'd have to say. So if you've enjoyed this episode, and I, I hope to God you have, drop a like on the video if you're looking forward to this new season. I sure as hell am, particularly after that start to the year and if you're new to the channel and this is the first video of mine don't worry i don't always look like this i actually have you know a normal looking face too um yeah subscribe for more videos like this and i'll see you guys soon thanks so much for watching bye bye
We also broke the record. <laughs> there is hair in my mouth. Particularly sure whether we could sign another DM or anything like that. Is there a wasp in the room now? You're bloody in here. Piss off. I actually just hit it. <laughs>